Good day everyone. Today I will be discussing to you the line segment and their measures. So let's have first discuss the different terms that you are going to encounter. First, we have a line segment. It is a portion of a line consisting of two distinct points and all points between them. We know that line, let's say we have a line, is consists of infinite many points. That means we have a point here, infinite many points. That's why we come up with a line. A line segment, a portion of a line with two distinct points. So a distinct point, let's say we have A and B here. So a line segment with end points. So this is the example of a line segment. Okay, this one. Next, next definition is Array is a portion of a line consisting of an endpoint and all points which are one on one side of that endpoint. So we have an endpoint, then infinite portion of a line. So we have here. Let's say we have A here, then so see the difference between a line segment and array? So we have in a line segment, two endpoints. But in array, we only have one endpoint and going to infinity. Midpoint. It is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. When we say congruent, that is also referring to equal. So that means if we have segment A, B, and let's say we have point X here as a midpoint. If AX measures three units, therefore XB also measures three units because X divides the segment into two equal or congruent segment so if this is three also this is three units next by sector of a segment or segment by sector it is a line segment ray or a plane that intersect the segment at a, at its midpoint so let's say we have a line segment mm -hmm segment and let's say X and Y and we have a line that intersect on that line segment let's say A therefore this line let's say line T is a bisector of the segment so that means it is a bisector, it divides also the segment into two equal part because the angle, uh, the bisector of a segment divides or intersects the midpoint and midpoint divides the segment into two equal parts. You will also encounter the ruler postulate. So in our ruler postulate, in our number line, so we have the zero, the positive numbers, and the negative numbers. To every point in the line, there corresponds exactly one real number called its coordinate. So let's say we have point A. So the coordinate of point A is negative 5. Let's say we have point B, the coordinate of point B here is negative 2. C, its coordinate is 0. D, we have 2. And E, we have 5. To every real number, there corresponds exactly one point in the line. So one point in the line. 
the distance between two points is equal to the absolute value of the, of the difference difference be, of their coordinates. So that's we have, let's say we we're going to find the distance between A, B, so we have the absolute value of A minus B or B minus A. Now let us try to find the distance of the following. Let's say find the distance between A, D, segment A, D. So that is the absolute value of negative 5 minus D is 2, so 2. So absolute value of negative 5 minus 2, negative 7. Get the absolute value, that will give us 7. So since we are talking about the distance, we have this absolute value, always get the positive value of this because we are dealing with the distance. So if you want to check if your answer is correct, so we have 7 units, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 is correct. Another one, find the distance between D, E. So we have absolute value 2 minus E, 5. So we have absolute value of 2 minus 5, negative 3. So get the absolute value of negative 3, that is positive 3. So 1, 2, 3. So that's the ruler postulate. So after discussing this, let's have some exercises regarding the line segments and its measure. Now let's have these exercises. Fill in the blanks with the correct answers. The distance from D to F is blank units. So that is number one. So first, locate our points. We have D to F. D to F. So how many units? We have one, two, three. So there are three units. So write your answer here. Okay? The distance from D to blank is the absolute value of 2 minus negative 2. So we know that D has a coordinate of 2 and what is negative 2? That is B. So B. From our ruler postulate, we just substitute the point and its coordinate, B and D. The length of BC or segment BC is blank. So from B to C, so there are two units, one, two. So two units. Two units. Or if you want to use the formula, it's okay. That is negative 2 minus 0, that is negative 2. Get the absolute value, will give us 2. Next, number 4. The length of segment AD is blank. A to D. So how many units? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 units. Again, if you want to use the formula, that is negative 4 minus 2, that is negative 6. Get the absolute value of negative 6, positive 6. 5 minus negative 4, or the absolute value of 5 minus negative 4, is the distance from A to blank. So A... We know that A is negative 4, and 5 is F, so that is the distance of 5 to negative 4, a distance from A to F. Next, number 6. Segment AB is congruent to segment BC 
because they have equal length of blank units. How many units from A to B? One, two. And from B to C, one, two. So we have two units. Segment BD is congruent to segment GF because they have equal length of blank units. So B to D, so one, two, three, four. So from B to D, we have four units, then G to F, one, two, three, four, another four. So they are equal. So four units. The coordinates of the midpoint of BD is blank. So B, D, the coordinate of the midpoint is zero. The midpoint of AC is blank. So A, C, our midpoint is, our point is point B. Segments congruent to CD are blank. So we have how many units from C to D? One, two. So equal to that are the following. Can be G to E, segment G E, segment E F, segment E F. It can be segment A B or segment B C. B or it can be segment GE. -E. So we're done in our topic. Thank you for watching Senior Pablo TV.